Greetings. Dawn Wright, Esri Chief Scientist here. We hope you enjoy this series of videos that was actually recorded as part of a recent meeting with the National Geographic's Pristine Seas Program, also with UCSB's Sustainable Fisheries Group. We feel these videos do a great job of showcasing the entire ESRI platform and its great utility for ocean science, ocean conservation, and science communication. So please enjoy. I thought we would start off just giving a brief background. Some of you know ESRI, some of you don't, about our organization, and then very quickly touch across what we're doing with respect to our tools. ESRI is about 51 years old this year. Uh, our main focus is to build software tools that support our users. They're really basically uh, who we live for. And our mission is to advance GIS, uh, serve them, advance science, integrate science into the technology of GIS, and uh, then also work to or aspire to make a difference in various activities. And one of them that I am really interested in is seeing how we might be able to support you in your efforts. And uh, it's audacious for us to say that uh, we have something that we could offer you because we all are just in love with what you guys are doing, as a matter of fact. So, but on the other hand, maybe there's tools or maybe there's a partnership with data that, um, that we could offer that would maybe enrich or help you do your work better. So the, our users are about 350,000 organizations. They cover pretty much every field. And we build what we call generic tool sets, geospatial tool sets that serve them in all these various fields. And the way that we think of ourselves and our work is that we craft useful, that's an important tool, technology that helps our users be more successful. And each of those words for us matters. And we do this in the body of a product called ArcGIS. And it's, it's enormous. It's quite uh, sizable and has different manifestations. So many of you know aspects of ESRI, but I want to give you a quick overview of our work. Today, we have great tools and about, uh, well, several million users that use it on the desktop. And they do little projects. Uh, we have hundreds of thousands of implementations of server technology. These are stood up on, on infrastructure inside of organizations. And then we have about 8 million users who use a cloud system we call ArcGIS Online, which has millions of layers of data in it. It interconnects with our desktops and our server technologies. And it's kind of a system of systems with portals, with metadata that link these different distributed data sets together. So each year, we spend a nearly $400 million of our customers' money, <laughs> actually, on trying to advance ArcGIS in various forms. So each year, we have to report to our users. And these are the general categories of work with teams. We have about 2,000 engineers and product people that work on the basic product, some of them here in Redlands, but many of them scattered around the globe in different development centers. The in addition to the basic tools and their evolution, we also have built a collection of data. About 33 million data sets are shared mostly by our users, but also Sean Breyer and a team here in Redlands curates a series of layers, thousands of them, we call the Living Atlas. It's the best available data that we acquire from our users, or in some cases, we build ourselves. All of this data is available openly to our users to be able to exploit and use. You may have questions about it, but we're going to get to that later because Sean's going to talk. Uh, and this data is largely uh, updated on a quarterly and in some cases on a daily basis. One of the hearts of GIS is spatial analytics. And we have thousands of analytic tools, 2D, 3D, in-dimensional tools. These are just some of the new tools that we added this year, some of it in response to COVID, but many of them just generic spatial temporal analytic tools. 
tools that support very large data, 3D data, volumetric data, machine learning and AI tools, uh, and modeling and scripting environments. The Jupyter Notebooks are now integrated with our desktop tools. They're integrated with our enterprise server tools, and they're also integrated with ArcGIS Online. What this does is it gives us a window into open science and open software tools of many different ELKs. So we can use Python libraries uh, and bring them right into the desktop experience using bi for big data analytics and operations. The AI and machine learning world has a huge, huge aspect of our, our resource budget is being spent on this field. We have a development center in India with also many people here. Our idea is not to build AI and machine learning tools. It's really to integrate them into our own uh, craft of geospatial. And we use, again, as I mentioned, um, notebooks to be able to make the bridge between those open tools and the experience in both our desktop and also in our server environments. Take, take for example, uh, tools like R or TensorFlow, or uh, uh, these are s just showing a few examples of it. Uh, we also have a large team here focused on imagery. Uh, these are imagery tools that know how to manage very, very large collections of imagery, millions, even tens of millions of images or small uh, collections, and then do extraction from or map production from imagery, uh, also do analytics. These are just a handful of the new tools that we've added, uh, change analysis, uh, do visualization exploitation. This imagery stuff has historically been on local servers and in the desktop, and this year we've mo we're moving it all under Kubernetes to the cloud so that our users can upload their imagery or access large libraries of imagery of other users and exploit them for their own applications. Is this too fast? It's all right? Okay. Well, uh, we do a lot in 3D and most recently have been working in volumetric uh, work with voxels. This, I know, would be interesting to many of you in ocean environments trying to look at, um, and, and we'll show some demonstrations of it. Uh, but, uh, you know, 2.5D, 3D, uh, in-dimensional volumetric data, now, this is one of the big uh, things that we're doing both for the atmosphere and also for ocean environments. Uh, these, this slide simply uh, takes a nod to the being able to bring in real time at volume uh, information. And we have thousands of users who read in uh, their real time IoT sensor data and visualize it, but also do analytics in stream, things like simple things like geofencing but uh, also buffering analysis. And, and again, this integration used to be on a server, now it's all in the cloud. So you can connect your IoT, bring it in, do analytics, uh, like ships moving around, whatever. Uh, so when we looked at uh, your work, I mean, uh, the whole idea is that you're in the process of creating geographic understanding. That's how we would interpret it. Uh, it's much, it's a, it's a rich, rich environment, the idea that you would create a database behind pristine seas that would allow you to uh, do all the great work that you are doing. So we just conceptualized this idea that GIS provides a kind of framework for this. Uh, part of it is, you know, that old saying, uh, when you have a hammer, everything looks like a nail. <laughs> well, actually, GIS is... Uh, is a set of tools that we love and have been working on in various aspects. So uh, we began to put some demonstrations together to kind of show you possibly how you could link up your measurements, do visualization, do analytics, uh, this leading to the idea of doing planning, geoplanning of some sort, uh, decision making and action, all of which you actually have already been doing. Uh, but we're just looking at how we can support you possibly with an integrated platform to scale it up and also take advantage of all the other people that are working in our community in the ocean environments. So this idea of a global GIS has been uh, bouncing around here at ESRI for a few years. 
Uh, and the ArcGIS Online environment with its 8 million users, in a way, is creating such an animal. Uh, there are literally millions of these data sets, as Sean will be showing you, that have been shared and made available so that people in education or in science uh, or in NGOs can have access to this uh, and share it. And it's in part a kind of system of systems. It's lots of different servers, also lots of cloud environments where people are uh, meta, you know, sharing their metadata and access points with services environments so they can reuse and, and uh, mash up their information uh, in various ways. So uh, in the last year, year and a half really, ESRI has been working with a loosely connected network of, of organizations, and National Geographic being one of them, but Microsoft, uh, Amazon, UN, SDSN, that's the, uh, the organization by Jeffrey Sachs about the SDGs, uh, the Wilson Foundation on Land or Terrestrial uh, Biodiversity Analysis, and NGOs and others. And our, our big idea is to be able to take this information and craft it in such a way that there's different user experiences or domain work experiences that would exploit that uh, living atlas and living science uh, laboratory. Uh, and so working with National Geographic, especially in the education areas, we're making some progress. But also uh, in the biodiversity area, again, with with Ed Wilson's team uh, on the terrestrial environment. This idea would be that we open this up in such a way that we students could have access to it for educational materials, particularly at Nat Geo. We're partnered uh, with uh, Vicki Phillips and others to see if we can take the GIS tools and make it available with the right kind of curriculum. And obviously one of the big assets is, is the oceans that you guys are building as a database. So uh, this is sort of my aspiration. None of this actually exists, but <laughs> I'm trying to share uh, what we're thinking about anyway. Uh, also track the vital signs, and one of my colleagues here, Bern Zakowski, is going to show uh, some of the early work of showing uh, the idea of a, a vital signs uh, portfolio of things that show what's happening on the planet in real time. And then supporting conservation work uh, again, our early work has been on the land, but how can we support this in your work and then just open for exploration of science? Uh, this is largely ESRI-centric. It's, uh, uh, it's not pristine sea-centric, so forgive me for that, uh, but it at least gets us going for what uh, we wanted to talk about and share with you today. And we're going to start this uh, with a discussion by Sean talking about the living atlas and then how we're exploiting the living atlas with apps that show uh, indicators for the planet following, following the SDG environment that we're working on with the, with the UN. Mm -hmm. 